The global economy is contracting. We have seen this all throughout 2018 and it still persists in 2019. Take a look at the imbalances that have formed. Manufacturing down globally, stocks rise. Job numbers come out and they were lower than expectations, stocks rise. Bond market screaming warning signal, stocks rise. Somehow this feels like the year 2000 all over again, don't you think? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Typically in a given video, I show you so much information, jam pack it in. Well, today it's going to be absurd. I have to move through it very quickly or this is going to be an hour long. So stay tuned. I'm going to get into the stock market, what's happening there. I'm going to look at the manufacturing and how that is declining all over the world. Got some amazing charts to show you. I'm going to talk about the jobs numbers. We're going to talk about the deficit, the debt and everything in between. So let's get into it right away. The first thing I need to show you is actually two charts. We're looking at the stock market. In this case, you're seeing the S&P 500 in 2019, and then you're looking at it in 1987. And it seems to be very, very accurate. You put the two over top of each other. As you can see, it says you are here looking at this, this far into the year, July 2019, we've been following the exact same pattern. Now, does that mean that later this year, we are going to see a crash in the stock stock market nobody can be able to actually determine that and this chart doesn't tell you that but it just happens to be very similar when you see and you put the two over top of each other and that's the only reason I bring this to you it's just interesting that's all the next chart shows us this massive divergence in between the S&P 500 and the 10 year yield. In history, what we have seen is that these two will in fact converge. That means either the 10 year yield has to rise, something that hasn't happened in a very long time, or the S&P 500 has to fall down. These two here will have to meet up at some point and in doing so, it means that there is a very big problem. Optimism in the stock market is always at its highest, always at its absolute peak, right before any crash, right before any contraction. We have seen this time and time again. Right now, if you ask the average retail investor, they simply can't find enough margin, enough leverage to be able to satisfy their needs. That's where we're at today. And of course, this is dangerous. It's always dangerous, but people don't realize it until it's too late. On the way up, they look like geniuses. On the way down, not so much. It's not often that the SPX hits a new high with cyclical stocks down 13% from their peak. Good thing we have utilities and staples to rotate into. The sort of stuff you want to own in a downturn, the same one that most commodities and bond yields are telling you is around the corner. So this is David Rosenberg just telling you that we are seeing something very unusual going on in the market. And usually around this time, the investors who know what they're doing, who have lived through multiple cycles are now rotating their stocks they are adjusting their portfolios accordingly but instead the majority of people will simply pile on more and more and more because they thought what was working in 2017 is going to work now but that usually isn't the case he also had this to say the small business sector leads the cycle and employment here has plunged 61,000 in the past two months. Haven't seen this in over nine years. Same decline we saw February, March of 2008 when the consensus was busy calling for a soft landing. This isn't a repeat of 2016 by any stretch. In 2015 to 2016, we saw a contraction globally that was taking place and then we saw it reflated by central banks banks and other stimulus measures. He's saying here that you need to pay attention to what's going on. I'll show you those indicators in a minute. U.S. manufacturers new orders you can see year over year and total does not look good. This is a contraction that is taking place. Of course that goes with all of the other information I've shown you. This comes from marketeconomics.com. Subdued growth of business activity continues in June. You can see the chart in the bottom right hand corner. Activity growth edges up. That's from May's 39 month low. This is extremely bad at this time and it just shows you that this is not 
the United States, but it is a global issue that is taking place. We cannot blame it on the United States. They are not the core of this problem. It is all around the world. Business confidence dips to three-year low. Most people are unaware of that as well. They keep hearing about how everything is so fantastic, but if you actually look at the statistics, it doesn't tell you that. I've shown you this just previously. China's PMI is absolutely taking a beating right now, but of course this is something that fluctuates up and down all the time. However, this has been down to a level that is just over that contraction mark, and I will show you more about that here in just a second. The global manufacturing PMI, JP Morgan's indicator, has shown that we are at the levels not seen since 2012. So this just gives you an idea of what is happening globally. I talked about this in the introduction on purpose to let you know what we are headed into. From 2018 all the way up until present, we have seen this decline. Most people don't know what this is. They have no clue because they're looking at the shares of Amazon. They count all seven of their shares. They add up the current value of them and they believe that everything is just fine. But you cannot do that. If you want to be at least any level of sophistication within your investments, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes. If you were investing in in real estate are you just gonna buy a piece of property and then move on no you're going to do your due diligence not just before you buy the property but every single day you need to know what's going on around the building that you purchased you need to understand what's happening with the jobs in the area are there any new developments going up are they moving out what's going on in the actual vicinity these are all things that you need to understand but most people they don't they simply think that what they have is somehow shielded from whatever is going on around them. I really don't think I understand where they get that from. This is showing us all of these countries listed here, their PMIs currently, and as you can see over the last year, things have really, really changed. Depends on which country you're looking at, but July 2018, it looks to be rather good. However, it starts to get worse as we move down the line up until present June 2019. And there's a lot of red right through here. We're looking at this. You can see that once it makes it below the 50 mark it is a contraction so I wanted to give you this information to show you it's not the US that we have to worry about but of course this is all over the world everywhere whether we're looking at places like China or whether we are looking at areas like Europe or anywhere else it is simply a matter of fact that the world right now is globally the world right now is in a contraction phase now we're moving on to the jobs numbers. Job creation has another rough month in June as private payrolls rise by just 102,000. Certainly not the worst we've ever seen, that's for sure. But when they actually go beyond their expectations, either on the up or the down, it seems to move the markets. However, what we can note with this is that it had no effect. The market, in fact, went up today to a record level. We keep seeing this all the time. At the very bottom, they bring up the information that David Rosenberg was talking about. Small businesses lost 23000 for the month as construction and mining suffered drops. Here you can see the ADP employment change bringing us down to quite a significant decline that shows us the level of contraction. You could look at this going back all the way to the financial crisis, seeing similar behavior in this case here, but it all depends. Things like this can change at any instance, but we just need to follow it month to month. That's why I bring you this data. I'm always criticized of showing you the same information. However, if you're tracking data, you can't do that once and then never talk about it again. Again, it's, it's simply ridiculous. But anyway, those are the people that are just completely out of their minds. Anyway, this just shows you small enterprises coming down into a contraction. This right here shows us specifically small businesses, 1 to 19 employees that have moved down into this level. As David Rosenberg mentioned, it is this information that is kind of like the canary in the coal mine for employment. We saw this happening previously. That was back in the recession time frame so keep a very close eye on this. 
Last but not least, little bit of information, US trade deficit surges to five month high as imports soar. This doesn't surprise anybody though because we have seen this deficit rising over and over again. It doesn't even matter anymore. Nobody cares about it. They don't care about the debt. They don't care about the deficits. They will run this up to the absolute maximum. It doesn't even matter. All that matters is will the Federal Reserve be there to devalue the dollar? If they are willing to devalue the dollar, the stock markets can rise. And why is that the case? Simply because nominally it is rising. Now, do I think that the US dollar is somehow going to disintegrate in the near future? Other currencies around the world are probably more likely to fall apart before the US dollar does. That's important to note. When you look around the world and you see all of these countries printing their money to infinity and bringing it to confetti, it is simply a matter of fact that the US dollar seems better in comparison. It's not good. It's actually terrible. However, in comparison, it looks a little bit better, at least at this time as I recorded this 2019. But look into it deeper and you will understand the flaw that is with all fiat currencies. And this is the chart form here just showing you the US trade balance, the deficit giving us a decline. But unlike golf scores, the lower this goes, the worse it is. Well, that's all for this video. If you found it in informative. Hold on, you got to give me a like. You have to hit that thumbs up button, please. I really appreciate it. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books, they have everything that you need. You read two books, you got it all figured out. Click on the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. I have this other really important video that you need to watch. Definitely check it out. Just click on it and I will see you there.